what you have. Hold on to this. Has Christ forgiven you? Hold on to the forgiveness by avoiding sin. Has God blessed your life with some insight into his word? Hold on to it by studying it and living a life in accordance with God has shown you. We have to learn to hold on because there's a power opposing you. Hold on. Look at the words again. Fight the good fight of faith. Someone wrote me and said, uh, I'm trying to conquer this particular sin. Uh, it occurs when such and such comes close to me, this lady. I wrote back and said, well, tell the lady don't come close to you or stay away from her. If her presence contributes to your weakness, avoid her the way Job avoided sin. Here is how God described Job in Job chapter 1, verse 8. Let me pray again. Father in heaven, speak through me very clearly, dear God, that your people may be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth. Let me pause on that. Isn't that a beautiful testimony from God about a human being? There are some testimonials God has given in the Bible that are so beautiful. And I covet them. When God spoke to Abraham, he said, I know him. That he will command his children and his household after him. I know that man. I can trust him to lead his family. And God told Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth. And this is God testifying to the character of Job. Oh, that God will say that about me. When God looks down on Minnesota, or Minneapolis or Champlain or Brooklyn Park or Winnetonka or is it Minnetonka or Ramsey, let him say, have you ever seen the Ramsey SDA church? There is no church like that church. Have you seen KCC? There is no church like that church. Have you seen this young man? There is no young man like him. I can turn my back and I know he's not embarrassing me. There's none like him. There's none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. The fancy word eschew means to avoid. And so I told this young man, avoid the person who endangers your spiritual life. This other young fellow wrote me, yes, I broke up with this girl, but we're still in touch and there we fight. I said, look, Jesus said, if your right hand offends you, do what? Two things. What are the two things? Cut it off. Come on. Cast it from you. This is no joke. <laughs> Cut it off and then throw it away. If you're in a relationship that has endangered your spiritual life, cut it off. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and leave it cut off and then toss it away. I've spoken to so many young people who are in mixed relationships. Adventists, not Adventists. I said, look, break it off. Tonight. You call him, I'll talk to him for you. No, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was in Mombasa doing a <laughs> camp meeting. I was counseling. This young lady came to me, uh, maybe 28, 27. I have a boyfriend. He's not Adventist. I said, you got to break it off. I don't need details. Is he Adventist? No, break it off. Don't give me a speech. Break it off. We've been together three years. We're three years late in breaking it off. I said, she said, how can I do that? I said, call him. I'll talk to him. So she called him, and he came to the campground. And he stood right there. She stood right there. And I spoke to him. Listen to what I told him. Shook his hand. It was nice to meet you, you handsome young man. She has made a mistake and deceived you. Mm -hmm. She has made a mistake and deceived you. She has caused you to believe that this church favors this kind of relationship, and it does not. She's wrong. You did nothing right. All you did was exercise good taste. <laughs> and he shook my hand. He said, Pastor, I understand. I prayed, and he left. And they never got back together again. Are you following me? Anything that endangers your eternal life, cut it off and cast it from you. If you are in that situation right now with that guilty smile on your face, <laughs> break it off. 
call the pastor, the elder, come with me. And go announce I was wrong. I was at a church in a certain city, New York, preaching. This young lady came to me. Pray for my boyfriend. I said, uh, why? He won't come to church. I said, but why wouldn't your boyfriend, a nice, faithful, vegetarian Adventist, not come to church? <laughs> and she said, he's not an Adventist. I said, oh, okay. Here's what I'll pray for. I will pray that you will apologize to God for misleading him into thinking this is okay. She turned away and walked away. Mm -hmm. Anything that endangers your eternal life, get rid of it. Not your husband, of course, or your wife, but anything else, get rid of it. Are you with me? Come on, say amen. All right, what words have we looked at? Fight the good fight of faith. Where's that text found? I told you. Come on, come on. We haven't got all day. Where's the text found? 1 Timothy 6, 12. Paul said, fight. And Timothy was a young, as a matter of fact, Timothy was a teenager when Paul called him to work. Young men, don't wait until you're 28. Serve God at 14, 13, 12, 16. Don't just spend your life playing video games and watching basketball. God needs your energy and your youth. And so we're to fight the good fight of faith. What was the next word we talked about? Resist. Where's that text found? Not Genesis, no. <laughs> James, yes. What chapter? What verse? Seven. But what's the word that comes before resist? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, here's something else. Go to John 15. John 15. John 15, God bless you for loving God, for loving his word, and I address these remarks to you in this building and to God's people watching via the internet. Thank you very much for joining night after night, day after day. I really mean it. It was my honor to bring God's word to you. John 15, reading from verse 1. Jesus speaking, let me pray, Father, please restrain me and let your spirit have his way. In Jesus' name I plead and implore. Amen. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. By the way, I think I've said this before. It is the father that gets rid of useless branches. So when you decide to leave the church because you're badly treated, no one can get you to leave the church if you truly love Christ. Are you with me? No one can get you to leave the church. You can join another church of the same congregation, same denomination, but no one can get you to leave Jesus unless you choose to leave Jesus. Jesus said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now read verse 3 of John 15. Come on, if you have the King James Version, nice and loud. Now ye are clean, how? Through the word, come on, that I, which I have spoken unto you. Now we have resist, we have fight, we have hold on, and we have the word. Nothing will cleanse your mind like the word. Not a course in psychology from the University of Champlain, but the word of God will cleanse your mind. It is a cleansing agent. And so Jesus told the disciples, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. How does God cleanse the church? Ephesians 5, let's read from verse 25. Ephesians 5, reading from verse 25. I should have told you I read from the King James Version of the Bible. Do you have Ephesians 5, reading verse 25? Listen and read microscopically. Are you there? Husbands, love your wives. All husbands say amen. That was weak, but that's okay. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Now you read for me. With the washing of, by the word. The washing of water by the word. So he cleanses the church through the word, the word has a cleansing effect on the mind. Go to Psalm 119. Let's read verse 9. Every young person should know this verse from memory. Very short, very powerful. 
Psalm 119, verse 9, it says this, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. The Bible is saying, how can a young man clean up his life? It's very sad that the young life has to be cleaned up. But that's the case in the, which, the world in which we live. The Bible says, by taking heed thereto, according to thy word, young man, young woman, old man, old woman, it is the same. The word of God is the cleansing agent. Christ's Object Lessons, page 100, paragraph 1. Ellen White writes, if studied and obeyed. You know, that's my favorite word. The word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. Now think of those words. If studied and obeyed. Someone wrote me, maybe very early this year, my spiritual life is declining. I have no interest in spiritual things, church, reading, praying. I, I know God is good, I love him, but I just have lost interest. I sent her Bible passage to read and analyze and answer questions for me. I told her, I said, pray. Read the passage several times. When you read, shut out every possible distraction. So just you and that word existing in the universe, you and that word, nothing else exists. Read it, then read it again, then read it five times minimum. Ask the Spirit of God to direct your thinking, then answer this question. She wrote back, I am revived. Send me more studies. <laughs> so go, you study for yourself. I am revived, she said. This is amazing. The word of God is designed to revive you. It's designed to clean you up. And so the servant of God says, if studied and obeyed, the word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. Jesus was praying to his father, and he said, sanctify them. To thy truth. Finish the verse. Thy word is truth. Now, Jesus told the Father, sanctify his disciples. We know from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, and this is the will of God, even your sanctification. If the will of God is our sanctification, and 1 John 5, 14 says, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if Jesus prayed that prayer, anything Jesus prays, the Father answered then we have a prayer from Jesus for our sanctification. He said, do it through the word. I'll tell you something else. Go to John 17. Let's read verse 9. John 17, verse 9. If this does not make you feel good, I don't know what will. John 17, reading verse 9. Let's read from verse 8, then we go to 9. John 17, 8 and 9. Then we go to 22. 20, 20. After we go 8 and 9. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Now verse 9, very carefully. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Stop. Jesus says, I am praying for them, the disciples. In other words, at that moment, he's not praying for the world. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. Jesus said, I prayed for them. Now you may say, yes, but that was 2,000 years ago. Go to verse 20. Now, if you have the King James Version, you read it out loud for me. What does it say? Neither pray I for these, come on, but for them also, which shall believe on me. So Jesus is saying, all those who accept the gospel down through the ages, this prayer covers them. Do you understand what this means to you? Jesus prayed for you. Ah, that amen is weak. I said, Jesus prayed for you. Now, your mother has prayed for you, God bless her. My mother prayed for me all the days of her life since I was born. And I credit God first for my spiritual position and my mother. My mother. She's resting in her grave, but my mother. She prayed for her children, and I thank God for that. 
And if my mother and I come to the heavenly gates and there's one space left, give it to her without hesitation. Give it to her without hesitation. Jesus prayed for you. Remember when uh, J Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. What are the next few words Jesus says? But I, come on, have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Wait a minute. Jesus prayed for Peter. That prayer is for us. You're saying amen because you're nice. But do you understand what you're saying amen for? Who is Jesus? He's God. What did he do? He created heaven and earth by his word. What else did he do? He died on Calvary. He is God. He is creator. He's always been there. He conquered death. He raised himself from the grave. He told Peter, I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. Question for you. If Jesus prayed that prayer to the Father for Peter, will the Father answer that prayer? Yes. Now, John 17, 20, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Jesus prayed for you. Do not disappoint his prayer. Right where you sit, you are covered by the prayer of your Savior. He cannot force you. You can choose by your lifestyle, or I can, but by in, and step away from the covering of that prayer. But if you and I will hold on to Jesus, that prayer he offered in John 17 will continue to cover us. Fight the good fight of faith. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Avoid circumstances that put your salvation in peril. This is is the cleansing agent. And Jesus offered a prayer for you. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. My brothers and sisters, how can you lose with the word of God on your side? How can you lose with Jesus praying for you? How can you lose with a father who answers any prayer that Jesus offered. When Jesus prays, Father, Spirit, and Son are all on your side. We have the resources to conquer. We have what is required to live a life that glorifies God and embarrasses the devil. One other thing you need to understand. Let's look at the very first promise of the Bible. The first. Genesis 3. Verse 15, you should say it without looking, but I'll be merciful. Genesis 3, verse 15. Let me pray again. Father, I'm soon to end my remarks. Continue to speak through me, God, and bless your lovely people gathered in this building and on the internet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Listen to that verse microscopically. I, that's God, will put hatred in you for the things of the devil. You know why God has to do that? And I told you that a few, weeks, a few days ago. Because of Adam, we are born with enmity toward God. God says, wait a minute, I need to switch that enmity around. I will put enmity in you for the things of the devil. And the opposite effect will be, you will have love for me. Ask God to give you hatred for gambling. If that's your weakness. Ask God. Say, Father, you said, always confront, confront is not a good word, always present God's word to him. For instance, if, well, let me continue with this. Ask God to take selfishness out of your heart. All of this are expressions of enmity against God. Ask him, take out of me selfishness, laziness, this constant avoiding of God's word. Take it out of me and replace it with a love for God, a love for his word, a love for prayer, a love for witnessing, 
a love for kindness, a love for generosity. The very first promise of the Bible is a promise from God to put hatred in the heart for the things of the devil. When you pray, I was saying, present God with his word. For instance, let's say one of your children left the church. You pray to God, you go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish. If your son's name is John and he left the church, Father, you said you're not willing that John should perish. If you mean it, do everything necessary to bring him back. Not for my sake, but for your sake, because you're not willing that John should perish. Father, my husband loves me. He's very nice, but he, he needs to understand the truth. You say, Father, you said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, you will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. If you want him to know the truth, reveal it to him, I pray. Remind God of what he said. You say, Father, you said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that they may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Do you understand what open you the windows of heaven mean? Go to Genesis 7. Let me show you what that means. Genesis 7. We're talking about using God's word when you pray. God may ignore your words. He will never ignore his. Genesis 7, reading verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. Finish the verse. And the windows of heaven, what? What came down? The flood. Mm -hmm. You see, when God made the earth, he separated water. Here was the earth. There was water on the earth, in the earth, and above the earth. And so the earth was in a sort of a greenhouse arrangement, you understand, to protect the earth from the harmful rays coming in from space. They're harmful to us, but they have their function in God's system. Let me say it again. If you read, don't go there, just listen. 2 Peter 3, 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. There's water under the earth. There's water on the earth. And there's, there was water above the earth. When God sent the flood, he brought, down, he brought up water from underneath. He brought down water from above so much. The Bible says the highest mountains were covered. Now, the highest mountains. Keep this image in mind and listen to Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here with saved Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. The same way that flood covered every mountain top. When God blesses the faithful tithe giver, or tithe returner, God will bless you to cover every need you have. Somebody say amen. I didn't say every luxury you desire. I said every need you have, God will cover it. Because he said so. And COVID-19 does not change the word of God. Are you following me? God's promises are sure regardless of sociological conditions. And so when you pray to God, you say, you said that's what you said now if i had said it father i understand but you said and your word in titus 1 says which god that cannot lie your word says in numbers 23 19 god is not a man that he shall lie you said now stand by your word of course you say that with respect and watch what god but god will also say but you also said i will follow thee my savior you said that what happened to that? Hmm? You said that. What happened to that? You said, give me the Bible. You said that. What happened to that? You're so busy with work and school and children and boyfriends, you have no time for that which gives you life. Let me tell you something and I'll stop. Let me pray again. Father, I'll close. Give me a straight message for your people, please, Father, and restrain my carnal nature. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you have ever sent up a prayer request to God? Can I see your hand? 
or give one to the pastor. Yes. Do you know God has prayer requests? Hmm? We're always giving prayer requests to people. Pray for this, pray for that. And I travel all over the world by God's grace, and I get sheets of prayer requests, and I pray for all of them. God has prayer requests, but nobody asks him what his prayer requests are. Here's a prayer request from God. Pray every morning. And every night, at least. And God said, listen, world, I have another prayer request. Give me my tithe. That's God. And God is on his knees for years praying, please give me my tithe and stop hurting yourself. Stop living under curse. God has prayer requests. Gather your children every day and have family worship. Even if you get to work late. That's God's prayer request. God has another prayer request. Stop fighting among yourselves because it's a bad example of the community. God has prayer requests. Let's answer his. God has prayer requests. Stop drinking alcohol secretly. Stop smoking secretly. Stop living your life on the internet on sites that are dirty and nasty and impure. That's God's prayer request. Now, let's grant God's prayer requests. Young man, God has a prayer request for you. Since that young lady became your girlfriend, is she closer to God or further from God? Is she closer to her parents or always fighting her parents? Is she at risk being your girlfriend? God has a prayer request. Have the right influence on my daughter. What did I say? Fight the good fight of faith. What else did I say? Resist. But before resist, submit. Resist. What did I say about the word? It cleanses. What did I say about something that's an offense to you? Cut it off and throw it away. Throw it so far, it never comes back. Like Azazel on the Day of Atonement. What else did I say? When you pray to God, do what? Present God with his word. With his word. You said. You said. You said. And God will never back away from his word. But listen now when God says, now here's what I want you to do. A relationship is not a one-way street. It goes two ways. God said, okay, send your request to me. How many do you have? Two million. Okay, fine. I only have three. Pray. Study the word. And wrap that all into one word. Obey me. Let me close by telling you this. The person who obeys God will incur no regrets. The world may think you're suffering. Let me say it again. The person who commits his or her life to obey God from the heart will incur no regrets. There are no regrets for serving God. Young people, you're 17, 18. If Jesus doesn't come, you get to 30 and 40. The quality of your life then will depend on the decisions and choices you make now. Put your life in the life, in the hand of God. He'll take care of it. And you look back and you may see no regrets or very few and the ones you have will be small because God knows how to manage the life. And so as I leave you, I call upon you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Live your life for the glory of God. There is a Bible verse we tend to take as symbolic. It's not. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, come on, finish it, or whatsoever ye do, finish the verse, do all. Which means, let me ask you this, if you do something directly for God's glory, is that a spiritual act? Yes. Some of you didn't get it. Let me ask again. If you do something chiefly for the glory of God, is that a spiritual act? The answer is yes. Now, the Bible says do everything for the glory of God. Then our lives should be one constant spiritual life. When you work, listen to Ephesians 6 verse 5. Servants, 
Be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling. In singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Work as if you're working for Christ. Is that a spiritual act? Yes. If your work is to repave the highway, the Bible says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, finish it for me, do it with thy might. That's a spiritual, which means excellence is spiritual behavior. Ah, come on, say amen. Excellence is spiritual behavior. Young men, young women, you want to be spiritual in the classroom? Pursue excellence. It is not an act. It's a state of mind. In Psalm 106, verse 3, Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. And here's something I love to tell God's people. You've probably heard it before. What time is it? Can someone tell me the time? What time is it? If someone has a watch, a clock, what time is it? 6.20 what? 6.25, somewhere around 6.25. When does the sun set? 8. All right. When, what, what was that? <laughs> Whenever it sets, it's all right. When the sun sets, listen to me carefully, what comes to an end? The Sabbath, the holy day. In the Bible, a day begins at sunset. When the sun, listen to me carefully, when the sun sets, the Sabbath, the holy day, is over. But you are still a holy person. The sun does not set on your holiness. So whatever plans you have for tonight when the sun sets, now that you know, it does not set on your holiness. You may have to change them. Somebody say amen. You may have to change them because you're required to be holy. How many days of the week? How many hours? Case closed. That's living consciously. Blessed are they that do righteousness at all times. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. But bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of the life to come. Godliness, righteousness, right doing has benefits now and the benefits extend into the life to come. I'm going to close, don't panic. But you need to understand this. When Jesus comes, a curtain does not come down on your life. And then you start a new life. You start a new life physically. You don't start a new life morally. The very first day we spend in heaven will be no different from the last day we spend on earth. Let me say it differently. We must live as if we're in heaven now before we actually get there. Is that clear now? We must live now. And so I say again, when Christ comes, he does not bring down a curtain and say, okay, this life is over and this one starts. The curtain does not come down on the character. We move into heaven with the same character we had when Jesus came down to the skies. We have to live it now. This is the power. Let me speak to anyone of any age. Make an effort to memorize some verses make an effort i have a friend in kenya god bless kenya all the kenyans watuwa kenya she's a grandmother very precious friend of mine i won't call her name i know she's listening lovely family ah the family lives right here my heart is full of family and still room for more and I told her, why don't you try memorizing some verses? She was hesitant, I believe, at first. Now she's, she once did the first 10 chapters of Proverbs. Can you imagine? Now, it's, it's, memorizing Proverbs is a challenge because each verse is almost different from the other. Are you following me? I mean, you memorize Daniel chapter 2. There's a story. But Proverbs, every verse seems to be independent. So it's a real challenge. But she went through the first 10 chapters. 
and then John this and John that, and she's been memorizing. I have another friend in Kenya. I said, why don't you memorize some verses? Person started. Got John 14, then John this, and then John that, and then first John. Then I said, listen, these chapters are fine. Why don't you memorize a book? Memorize the book of Jonah. You have a mind that was designed to study God's word and memorize it. Now, will it be a challenge at first? Yes. We have a saying, practice makes perfect. Have you heard that saying? Yes. That's how professional football players are so good, or basketball, or baseball, or football, or hockey, or whatever. Now, in Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 601, paragraph 4, Ella White writes, that which at first seems difficult by constant repetition grows easy. I want you to memorize the Bible verse right now. It'll take you five seconds or less, fewer. Are you ready? 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Say it back to me. You just memorized the verse. Now, if you can memorize that, three words, then find a verse that has four words. Are you following? <laughs> Let's memorize another verse. John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. Make a tremendous effort and say it back to me. You just had another verse. <laughs> you strained your brain and you said it. Jesus wept. Three words. Let's try a longer one. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Let me hear it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Try. You'll be excited. And the presence of the word in your head will assist you in dealing with spiritual challenges. If you read the sermon on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, one third of that sermon is Old Testament quotations. Peter did not have a Bible. You read all the sermons in the book of Acts, Peter, Paul, James, whomever, they all have Old Testament quotations. They did not carry Bibles. They were not Bibles to carry back then. If there's a scroll, it's in the synagogue. Remember Luke uh, 4.16. And Jesus, as his custom was, went up into the synagogue and sat down. And there was lived unto him the scroll. And he read. That's where the Bible was. You better thank God everyone has a Bible today, even though it's not read. Make an effort. And I recommend to you the book of John. Because John tells us he wrote that book so that those who read it will have eternal life. And he was the closest disciple to Jesus. He lived the longest. And Ella White says, of all the disciples, he was the one who most closely reflected the character of Jesus. Read the Gospel of John. That's where John 3.16 is. Say John 3.16 for me. Very good. Mungu awabariki sana. Milele daima. Understand? God bless you forever. Put the word of God in your heart. Teach it to your children. Teach it. Now, who can uh, give me all 66 books from Genesis to Revelation? In order, all 66. Now, don't raise your hands all together at the same time. Who can? Oh, come. Yes, come, come, come. Come, all 66. Then I'll pray. Teach the children. You'll be surprised how quickly they learn. They will learn these things. But don't tell them, go and learn it. You teach them so you are involved. Come. How are you? You look like a nice boy. What's your, what's your name? Wesley. Wesley's a good name. How old are you? Ten. Jesus was ten. He was a good boy. Are you a good boy? Say yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Wesley, Genesis to Revelation. Here you go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Jude, Jude, Jude Ruth, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Num, Numbers, Ruth. Uh, Say them as they come to you. It's okay. Ruth. Ezra. Ezra, Nehemiah, Lem, Esther, Esther Lem, Job, Psalms. Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastics Songs of Solomon, Isaiah, 
Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Plementation, Plementation Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Daniel, Daniel Hosea, Hosea Joe, Joe, Amos, Amos Obadiah, Obadiah, Jonah, Jonah Micah, Micah, Micah Nahum, Rebecca, Rebecca Zephaniah, Haggai. Zechariah, Zechariah, Malachi, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, Lamentations, Ezekiel, First Corinthians, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. First John, First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus, Philina, Hebrews, James, First Peter, Second Peter, First John, Second John, Third John, Jude, Revelation. All right. Thank you, Professor. Okay. God bless you. Let me tell you a little secret. It is one thing to know it when you're sitting in a pew. It is something altogether different to come and stand here. I mean, everything goes off your head and flies to heaven. And so, God bless my young brother. God bless him. How many of you will say, Lord, I recommit my life to you. Hold me and guide me. Can I see your right hand? Stand with me. If I pray, I'm going to invite you to give me prayer requests. Not little sermons, just prayer requests. Are you with me? Make them short and to the point. This side, any prayer requests? Just raise your hand and tell me. What's her name? Nicole, how old is she? Oh, okay. Yes, my young brother. COVID, yes, okay, all right. Anybody else? Yes, sister. Pray for your children to come to Christ. When you speak, lower your mask. Anybody else on this side? No, 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 no. Yes, sister. Your children to accept Christ. Okay. Children are precious. Isaiah 49, 25, I will save thy children. This side. Oh, yes, my little sister. Pray for everyone who's sick. Okay, yes, we'll do that. This, yes. Pray for whom? The, oh, yes, thank you very much. Yes, yes, anybody else? Yes, my brother. Okay, my sister? Your brothers? Mm-hmm. Your friend's baby? Oh. No, Jesus was a baby. God has a special place in his heart for babies. Okay. Yes, my brother. Your brother's drinking. Okay. He used to preach. He can come back and preach. He can come back. Solomon walked with God. Then he left. Then he came back. Yes, sister. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Your what? Freedom of, oh yes, it won't last forever, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, sister. Your who? Pray for your sister. Pray for whom? Her sister and mother. Oh, the sister's name is Martha. Okay, all right, thank you, yes. Uh, did I see your hand? No, yes. Okay, all right, okay. Yes, sister. Your brother. Your children. Speak loudly. Your family. Okay, yes, my young brother. Uh, 
Okay. What's his name? Julian. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes, my brother. For whom? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, my brother. Lower that mask. Mm -hmm. Your family. All right. Yes, yes, sister. The orphans. Oh, yes, yes, orphans. Yes. Your friends, Carmen, who came. That the Spirit will continue to work on her heart. Yes, we're in the back. Yes. Yes, to hold on. The devil will try to discourage you. Hold on. And you hold on by holding on to this by faith. Because Jesus is the Word. All right. Anything else? All right. Let us kneel and I'll pray. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But he also says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. His word also says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things which are right in his sight. His word also says, Whosoever shall turn away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. His word also says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, Father, we kneel before you. We come before you in the name of sinless Jesus. The one who said, Let there be light. The one who said at the tomb of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who said on the cross, it is finished. The one who said at the open grave, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The one who said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. In his name, we come to you, Father. If we have misrepresented you today on the strength of the sacrifice of Jesus, forgive us with the removal of sin replace it with a hatred for sin which is to say a love for jesus and what he will have us to do dear god change our hearts i pray because everything proceeds from the heart change our hearts give us a new one and a new spirit we recommit our lives to your loving father we're so sorry for the many times we've disappointed you. We recommit our lives. Regardless of age, dear God, we recommit our lives to you now. And we ask you, Father, to pay attention to all the prayer requests that were mentioned. You heard them. You knew them before they were spoken. Their prayers for children to come to Christ, for those who are sick, for unity in the church, Someone in the hospital, father, parents praying for children, spouses praying for each other. Whatever the requests were, Father, you heard them, and there were many unspoken requests in the name of Jesus, God. Do something, Father. Do something, dear God. Move in the lives of your people who have been listening to your word. Move in their lives, Father. Your good God, your word says, he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Father, if you'll be so gracious to the unjust and the evil, what about how you deal with us, your people? Jesus said, Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? God, take care of us, Father. Provide for us, God. Let us do all we can, but not at the risk of endangering our relationship with you. Please bless every family, Father. A double blessing on the children, dear God. Unite the spouses, Father. Let every home be a little heaven on earth. Let the light of Jesus Christ shine from every earth and from every home and from every heart. Father, bless the leadership of Faith International and Ramsey and KCC. Wherever your people are in this city, Bless the leadership, Father. But from my point of view, bless Pastor Mokua in a very special way. 
Give him wisdom from above their God. Because leadership is not easy. Moses is the outstanding example of that. Let's pastor Tim, Pastor Fred, all those working with the pastor to manage this church and Ramsey, bless them, God, and let their example lift the congregations. I personally thank you for the honor of speaking for you. Where I let you down, forgive me, gay God. Help me to do better in my next assignment. Bless all those who heard wherever they are on this earth. Let the truth long remain in their minds, dear God, and draw them to you and produce the image of Christ. Bless all the countries where people tuned in, Father. Bless the leaders. Now, dear God, we commit ourselves to you. Wrap your arms around us, dear God. Draw us to your bosom and keep us there, Father. Keep us there, I pray. When you come into your kingdom, save us, every member of our families, and those who have come to know you, who have come to know you through our experience and our example, I pray this sincerely, dear God. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. If ever I come across your mind, wherever you are, I'd be very grateful if you will say, Father, put your words in that man's mouth. God bless you. Here, Pastor Otim, Pastor Eka, Pastor Collins, Pastor Fred, and we are so blessed tonight to have our African coordinator in the African Ministries, who also is the Vice President of Minnesota Conference. To come forward, we are going to pray for you. I pray for you for your next assignment for God to be with you. And uh, as uh, the Vice President of Minnesota Conference comes, I want to let you know that uh, in this district, we have a team of five pastors that we work very closely. And we thank God for the ministry he has given to us. May God bless you in your ministry and wherever you go. I call upon uh, our conference vice president, Pastor Brian Mugandi, who is also the African Ministries Coordinator, to say a word, and then we'll kneel down and we pray for Pastor Randy. Pastor Mugandi, it's your time. Good evening, church. We want to thank you for attending these meetings. Uh, there are some of you. There are some of you who were in church constantly, and there are many of you who watched through uh, the platforms that were provided. We thank you for participating. We thank uh, Elder Skate for his ministry here and leading uh, in every night's presentation, going through the word of God, challenging us to hear the Lord's voice. We thank those of you who have accepted the challenge to live right, to live with God, and to join his remnant church. I'm told that you had uh, baptism this afternoon. We pray that uh, the, churches, the churches involved will support those new members to allow them to grow in the faith, hold them by the hand, and walk with them. Remember, they are beginning. You are almost at the end of your journey, so don't expect them to be like you challenge them to look at you but support them as they struggle in their growth just like you do for your little ones we thank elder skid for your ministry we pray that you will continue to hold the 
the fire of the gospel. And uh, in your next assignment, please carry our greetings and our prayers as you do God's ministry. Blessings to all of you. Our eternal Father, here is your man servant kneeling humbly before you, asking to be cleansed and rededicated for the next ministry. O oh Lord, we pray that you will fill him with your Holy Spirit that again you will, you will touch him with that call from heaven, that your word may burn in him like fire, so that he will be ready for the next assignment. We pray for his health. We pray for his strength. We, we pray, Lord, that you will sharpen his mind we pray for the next assignment that you will open doors for ministry. Yes. And Lord, keep the fire burning oh, yeah. until that time when you will call all those that have been faithful to come home. We don't forget those that have committed their lives today. Please keep them faithful and keep the names written in the book of life. We thank you for hearing and for answering our prayer because we have prayed in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, can we go offline? Then I thank you, Tom.